Well, a leading humanitarian aid group has accused the European Union of being complicit in the torture, killing and rape of migrants and detention camps in Libya. The system is partially run by armed militias and people smugglers, and critics say the EU is supporting these groups in return for stemming the flow of migrants across the Mediterranean. And a ritual reports from London. Thousands of migrants desperate to get to Europe are being held in detention centers across Libya. Conditions are better at camps like this one, run by the UN's International Organization for Migration. But away from the cameras and the glare of the global media, aid group Doctors Without Borders says armed militias in Libya are detaining migrants in horrific conditions where they are subject to torture, rape, starvation and killing. And basically, how I will describe those detention centers are for me manufacture of suffering at industrial level. Migrants picked up at sea by Libya's EU-sponsored Coast Guard are sent back into the country's murky detention system. MSF describes it as a thriving enterprise of kidnapping, torture and extortion and accuses Europe of complicity. Are they okay with containing and sending people back to where they would be raped, tortured, and enslaved? Are they okay aiding and abating criminals and smugglers? The EU's executive commission denies ignoring the treatment of migrants in Libya. Italy has led the European operations there. Speaking Thursday, Italy's Prime Minister pledged he will demand improved conditions in the detention centers. <laughs> But this commitment cannot go against our commitment to fight against the human smugglers and the flow of migrants into our countries. The EU is struggling to balance public pressure to end the migration crisis with the bloc's much vaunted human rights values, says Libya analyst Ricardo Fabiani. This is the problem and the paradox here that um, Europe needs, uh, at least from the point of view of the authorities, to do something about migration, to reduce migration, and the only way to do it, again, from the point of view of the authorities, is to reach uh, a deal with the various parties and actors involved in human trafficking. But the price to pay for this is uh, human rights violations, effectively uh, accepting that a degree of violence and human rights violation will, will take place. Fabiani says Europe appears increasingly willing to pay that price to end the crisis. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. In recent times, when Libya comes up in the news, it's either stories of detention centers for migrants, such as we just watched, or warring factions amid political crisis. But that's not all there is to know about the country. An antique collector in Misrata is showing decades worth of Libyan heritage through antiques collected over 20 years. Let's do a little time travel. In the midst of political turmoil in Libya, Ahmed al is dedicated to preserving his country's rich heritage. For 23 years, al has been gathering an impressive collection of antiques and has opened a shop in the city of Misrata to exhibit his treasures. His collection spans over 4,500 pieces that date back to the Ottoman Empire, the Italian colonial period, and throughout the rule of Libya's last king, Idris. My hobby started 23 years ago, and I tried to gather the largest collection of antiques to celebrate our heritage and culture, but also to preserve it. It was all through individual effort, and now I am able to open the shop to showcase this heritage and inform as many people as I can about their history. For now, al is focusing on showcasing his collection to as many people as possible. He's also considering selling some of the pieces to buy new ones in the future. He gathered the items from different parts of Libya, with some coming from Lebanon, Tunisia, Jordan, and even Egypt. The period pieces include vintage cameras, plates which belonged to Libya King Idris, Ottoman maps from 1902, and even an MG sports car dated back to the World War II period.
The idea of a collectible shop is very good and it's a good initiative. It is rare and unknown to find in Libya. And I hope people will pay attention to these things and educate themselves on these items so that we would have exhibitions. It's a great idea. Various parts of Libya are rich in ancient sites, including some of North Africa's finest Roman and Greek ruins, as well as prehistoric rock art in the desert region of Fezzan. But their preservation has been threatened by political chaos in the country, a country that slipped into political turmoil after an uprising that toppled longtime leader Muammar Gaddafi in 2011. Al-Magi aims to preserve and promote Libyan heritage for future generations to give them cause to remember their rich history long before the crisis. Well, a new study could offer clues to the history of human socialization. Lemurs hum to help protect themselves from predators and increase their troop social cohesion. VA's Caroline Turner has the details. Researchers are studying the Madagascar lemurs that hum to protect themselves from predators and increase social fabric within their group. Research carried out by Laura Bolt, a primatologist from the University of Toronto, could help future studies on how ancient human ancestors socialized with each other. During her five-month stint at the Bays of Mahafoli Special Reserve in southwest Madagascar, Bolt studied two specific vocalizations, moans and hums, produced by male ring-tailed lemurs, the lowest ranking, ranking members of the female dominant troop structure. <coughs> ring-tailed lemurs make 22 different vocal sounds, and Bolt recorded many of these to test their role in social cohesion. The primates spend their days moving through the tree canopy or along the forest floor, making them vulnerable to predators such as harrier hawks, feral cats and dogs, and fossa. Their contact calls are believed to help individuals track other troop members to increase safety. The research was published in the journal Ethology. Carolyn Turner, VOA News, Washington. Well, and that's our show for today. Now, be sure to watch Africa 54 on the VOA website at voaafrica.com. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. And we look forward to bringing you another show next week. ChannelCV.com is your source for news and other programming. I'm Chamberlain Usa. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.